Uh, yeah. This is going to be a short number just showing how to make a random number generator in uh, PLC. Uh, and here is written a code. This is all in structured text, of course. Uh, so, uh, and it's a function, and the function doesn't have a memory, but uh, the random number has to be stored from uh, iteration to iteration. Uh, because the PLC just execute the codes, and each time the code has executed, a new random number is generated. Um, and you have some temporary var variables. This one is working on long integer, 64 bits, uh, and long real is the result, the random number that's returned. Uh, yes, and the algorithm is, uh, is just uh, this linear congr congruential uh, algorithm. Uh, which is written down. Uh, you can find this algorithm on, uh, on, for instance, Rosetta code or something. Yeah, so this is uh, is two to the, two to the power of forty eight. Uh, the resolution. So what this one does is to generate a, a random number and then it normalizes the number to a random number between uh, zero and one. Uh, now to test uh, how good uh, this uh, random number generator is. Uh, it works on, on prime numbers, of course, uh, so here are the number, the constants used in the algorithm and the seed. Uh, to test it, we would just have to call this function block, and that has been done. Uh, it's called, and it, it will run uh, for 10,000 uh, iterations. Uh, so it generates a new number for each iteration, and it's just stored in an array here with uh, 10,000 members. Uh, and there's a trigger here, uh, th so we can just add a random uh, seed. Uh, yeah, well, we could have used that one, but uh, a prime number should be seven, I suppose. Uh, and here's the random number it, it outputs, and then they are just saved down here. So let's run this one. So, so the execute here is, uh, is going to be turned off. Uh, when it has uh, completed 10,000 uh, iterations. Now we have uh, generated this amount of random numbers, and now we would like to analyze this uh, random numbers. And uh, for instance, we could use Excel, but then we need to get random numbers out of, of this data block. This is a TI put a portal from Siemens, it works on data blocks. Uh, but we could take a snapshot here. Here, uh, you can't copy these because these are live values, and uh, if you try to copy them, you will not get them. But here are the random numbers generated. Uh, so what you can do is you can mark that one and scroll all the way down. Let's see if we can get down. Ah, I think uh, we are here, and it's the shift. Now you have selected all of them. Control C. This is running on a virtual machine. So now we copied it to the clipboard. And if we now go to um, Excel, for example, uh, and paste the random numbers in here, this is a series that's been previously generated and we should be down to 10,001, I suppose. 1,002. Oh, we have the zero index here too. Uh, whatever. Uh, to analyze this, uh, a histogram or something like that would be uh, okay <laughs> to see how they distribute because a random number is going to be evenly distributed between uh, 0 and uh, 1. Uh, so what I've done here, here are the random numbers, then I've just made some bins. I think I've got 100 bins, yes. Uh, and uh, then you can run the, the, the histogram function in uh, Excel. Uh, it's located on data. You have to turn it on. It's in data analysis. You just search on the internet how you, uh, how you do that. Uh, histogram. OK. Uh, so what I would have to do here is to select uh, the input range, which is B, the bin range, which is this one. Come on, come on, come on. There. 
and output range uh, I'll, I'll put it in in G here so what you would do is you could just uh, not the G66 but you could select this one or something like that oops I, I destroyed my range whatever I've done it but you would have to select uh, select an open range here I would then do we select the bins come on here and then it's this one and I would have to scroll up and for instance select this one yeah, in the J we can run it and see what it does uh, let's see put range oh, I selected all and yeah, of course you can't do it on on uh, on text uh, not help okay well this is the way you uh, you do it I don't know I think I had I have probably a text somewhere down here okay. do this one ah whatever Well, uh, here are uh, here are the ranges uh, that they are within in zero with zero itself. There are none, but uh, as they have uh, around a hundred ranges, what you can see here is that the uh, the uh, random number uh, is uh, yeah, it's pretty even. It's 115. I don't know. I haven't tested her which one is the max and the minimum, but you can see they are pretty evenly. Well, or they are distributed around 100 here. Uh, of course uh, this depends on uh, if we go back to the code and let's see if you select this one again uh, this depends on the algorithm you're using here and these numbers and they are going to repeat themselves uh, but not uh, that frequent so uh, this is a simple random number generator uh, shown for uh, for uh, for just a semantic or TI portal. Uh, the thing here with a PLC is that uh, don't try to run an, uh, uh, a loop for ten thousand. It could probably do it because it's fast, but uh, a PLC program would time out and it would uh, the PLC would stop. So usually what you do is that you do uh, you run your program over and over again instead. So you make a loop for the program, so let the program run once and uh, when it's done uh, the, the PLC would run the program itself in the task. This is running in a cyclic task or, or in, interrupt, yeah, in an interrupt. Don't try the equivalent of a do uh, while one or something like uh, that. Do until forever or whatever. Uh, the PLC is going to stop. So here, for, for each program cycle, there's a, uh, it's generated one random number. But if you want to use this, you could do something like it's done here. Where you have an array, you can generate 10,000 random numbers, and you can pick out of those, because they are fairly random down here. You can just go through them. So what you could do is that you could uh, generate the random numbers, uh, uh, and then pick out of the arrays, array. But of course, uh, as this function is built, use the last random number as a seed uh, just run it over and over again it's going to give you a new random number each time so the algorithm will work uh, fine fine for for this purpose and as seen from the excel sheet uh, they are pretty evenly distributed randomly